Goy. Hi. Today um, we're going to talk about being a versatile product designer. Uh, you're a senior uh, industrial designer here at Mind Cellular, so uh, I know you have uh, a lot of experience in uh, many different industries with many different products with many different clients. I'm sure you'll have uh, a lot to uh, to add to that. Our clients often come to us with expertise in their field, with a product, with their technology or whatever. Usually they're way better experts at this narrow field than we are, but still their field is somewhat narrow. How can, uh, how is working with such experts from different industries? Uh, is it something difficult for someone who is an expert not so narrow in a wider range of industries? Uh, well, as usual, it depends. <laughs> okay. Because um, once the client uh, went through the industrial design process, it's quite easy for him to jump into this process once, once again. So you mean if such a client has experience in working with an external uh, yes. A team? Yes, because they know what can they expect okay. from, from external services, such as industrial design company. Um, but usually uh, when a company reaches us, it's their first or second attempt to, to design a product from scratch. And that's uh, usually something that they don't know what to expect. Okay. They don't know what to expect, which, what kind of results they get after, uh, after the, the, the period of time of working on, on their product. So it's like, uh, you could say it's less about expertise in engineering or design and kind of more about expertise in the, in the workflow or in the process of developing a new product? Yes, because developing a new product in every brand uh, or every branch of, of, uh, of market is nearly the same. Okay. Because we have to to know what we want to design. We have to know uh, whom we are designing for. Um, and we have to know uh, what is the at least estimated budget yeah. for, for the po project and for the end product that we are going to deliver. So these four, maybe five factors are nearly uh, the same uh, in each uh, industry, okay. but um, of course there are some little details that differentiate these different projects. For example, in medical um, instruments or medical products, mm -hmm. we have to look at standards, at some um, sophisticated um, laboratory tests okay. and, and so on. So we have to include this into the process so that the end product will, um, will meet, be, those, standards. Will, will meet yeah. those standards, will comply with them. Sure, but the general process of development uh, for the new product uh, is, like you say, more or less the same. Yes, it's more or less the same uh, because the technologies involved, um, like manufacturing technologies, um, are, are similar. This is not very big difference. The difference is in at the end of the process. So uh, my guess is I have a lot less experience than you in, in this industry would be that um, clients who uh, come to us for services uh, probably expect uh, to find a company that has a lot of experience in their specific niche maybe or do those clients, especially the ones you mentioned, who are maybe doing their first product or maybe their second product, they don't yet have a lot of experience with the process. Uh, do they expect to find a company with a broad um, design experience or rather narrow in their specific field? Um, usually companies think that um, when having uh, a, a, a company, a partner that have that has the same experience that they have is a good partner for them. Because um, when they want to design, for example, a car, yeah. they would approach a company that had designed a lot of cars yeah, before. Sure. 
Um, but the car industry is a bit different because they have much more narrow ex field of expertise because the project itself is difficult because yeah. you have to design lights, you have to design a it, drive chain. A car is basically a ton of, yes, a ton of products yes. and all merged into one. Um, so that's why uh, these companies are uh, usually looking for just the style or styling in external companies. Oh, okay. Um, oh, let, let's simplify. What if a company wants to make um, a, a toaster? Are they looking for companies that has experience in designing toasters? <laughs> and you, you get to the point. Because when we want to design a 100th poster, yeah. um, it's not possible to make a living as a company <laughs> <laughs> or make a profit as a company just by designing toasters. Yeah, and probably if you would have to design a hundred toasters in your career, then the hundredth toaster either would be exactly the same as the last 50 or something totally not rem rem reminding a toaster. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe yes, but this drives creativity because once you get uh, 10 same looking toasters, you are bored of that yeah. and you begin to think how might it look differently or work differently. Well, not only look, right? Because we also, well, I'm not sure if it would be the same in the case of toasters, but um, using technologies that are maybe not um, standard in some industry uh, leads to innovation, right? Yes, this drives innovation and that uh, those factors like um, another function or enhanced function functionality uh, comes after doing different designs for different companies. Yeah. Um, so not only you have uh, a sort of wider perspective or more space for your cre creativity as a designer, but also as an engineer to use different for technologies. Sure. Yes, for sure. Because we are, f sometimes we are forced to find different technology because uh, the technology that we would recommend uh, as the first choice of technology um, for our client might not might not be sufficient mm -hmm. because of the economy, because of the uh, um, amount of produced uh, goods, because they are going to produce, for example, 1000 uh, products in a year. Uh, and we would recommend them to um, to manufacture it in any way that is more for hundreds of thousands. Yeah. Um, so we have to look for different technologies to make their products possible. But of course, it has some advantages as well as disadvantages. Yeah, sure. Well, um, I'm, I'm sure that, um, for, uh, uh, sure, at least I get the, imp the impression that clients, um, the first thing that comes to mind when they think about working with an industrial design studio like ours is the not necessarily the technology part you, you just uh, talked about, but mainly the, the look, the design, right? Beca because that's something visual when you, I don't know, search the web for a company that does industrial uh, design. Usually the exterior design comes mm -hmm. up. And in fact, it's, it seems to me like it's more about actually the mechanical and the engineering than the styling. Um, which is also yeah this there is a term that form follows function and yeah. function follows the, the form um, but yes uh, i think that there is a space in this area for the design there is a space for each of the companies like ours like we deliver not only the uh, the style the the external design but we also uh, deliver the internal design like yeah. the mechanical design. Electronics. Electronics. The idea on how the product might not only look, but also work and be manufactured. Yeah. Mm, well, but, that's also, uh, I mean, I, I guess every aspect only benefits from working on uh, different industries, right? They're like you can also not only incorporate the technology from one industry, from one industry into another, but also some aesthetics or some solutions in the exterior design, you can 
use something you've see, you, you did for one industry and get inspired by it in another, right? Right. Um, right, and that's totally true because we take from one design uh, project into another the ideas um, that might never happen in the industry that we we might be focused on yeah. are translated from another industry from another uh, from another project another idea mm. from another technology into the product um, that benefits from that yeah mm. Uh, Mind Sailor started as uh, a company that was making hundreds of pen drives. <laughs> okay. So we were there as okay. Mind Sailors. So I didn't know that. We, we started as designing just a one type of product. Okay. Um, That's interesting. But, uh, but it was a cooperation. So, so Mind Sailors was an internal design studio for a bigger company. Okay. That's why we could focus on uh, on such a small scale of of uh, of so uh, that of point, products, <laughs> uh, you are experts in uh, uh, a narrow specific field of pen drives. Yes, <laughs> yes. So so basically, some some quite impressive uh, uh, awards came uh, for uh, or, or because of the fact that we were experts in making pen drives. Okay. But uh, afterwards, uh, Mind Sailor switched into more um, external design studio, a separate company. And then, um, as an example, the Dice Plus happened. Yeah. Um, and the Dice Plus was a different product. It wasn't a pen drive. Yeah. But the ideas that were in this small world of electronics came from pen drives into a hardware gaming product. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it was not a platform. A platform, yeah. yeah. So these ideas like mechanical small little hinges or s s small ports or putting a lot of electronics into a really small volume um, were not possible. I believe that mm -hmm. they, they wouldn't be possible without this expertise in, in, in pen drives. Mm. Who knows, maybe someone designing the new PlayStation also started with pen drives. <laughs> uh, maybe yes, <laughs> or maybe with being a fisherman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Um, do you have your own um, sort of, maybe not preferred industry, but is there an industry <clears throat> that you like specifically like on working on products from that industry yes um this is the medical one okay um so medical industry you've mentioned it before with the safety regulations and additional uh, steps in a development process uh, yes but it, regarding the certification the the tests that or the standards uh, that have to be um, that these products have to comply with yeah um are usually at the end of the journey of the project so so usually the client uh, has his own um team mm -hmm. that uh, works 100 percent time just on the certification because it's that that's hard yeah it's that that's difficult. how it hard it is um but um Designing the product that is in medical is uh, more satisfying for me as a designer because I know that I'm going to design a product that will help people um, okay. enhance their, li their living yeah. or improve their health. So, so, it's, so it's not your favorite because of the uh, more complex process, it's because of the meaning and function of the product? Yes, definitely yes. Okay. It's definitely more satisfying to deliver uh, a product that would help one single person than making a product that is a rubbish for a million. Yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> um, okay, so um, when we say that uh, we have a lot of designs in our portfolio and they're from every single industry almost. So. Is it like every engineer or designer in this team has their own sort of 
industry expertise or how does it work uh, with specific team members? <laughs> it's um, quite a tough question to answer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because um, uh, gathering these people into, into a team is uh, quite a sophisticated and time-consuming process because okay. once you get into the industrial design uh, industry mm -hmm. um, you have to I believe forget about being a, an expert in a narrow field okay. you have to open your eyes you have to open your mind um, to learn every single day things that you have never expected to learn before yeah, yeah. Um, so we are our common uh, our common sense or uh, what we have in common yeah is something that we have uh, open minds and we have uh, really big eagerness to learn new things so okay. This is something that is a baseline for the industrial designer. But I'm but sure there's something like you could say that um, you're specifically good at or that your expertise is something. Yes, and this is what I'm, I'm going to say. <laughs> because uh, each of us in the team has uh, their own strength, strengths. Um, as in psychology, as in, you know, uh, when in when you know something about people, yeah. you know that they have their strengths and yeah. their weaknesses. And we try to enhance those strengths and work as a team on these weaknesses. So once um, some people are not good at, mm. I don't know, for example, sketching, yeah. you don't have to be a really good sketch uh, sketcher yeah. to be a good designer because you are good at different things. Okay. So we have experts in more humanistic approach. Um, they can ask difficult questions that can lead to better understanding of the project because we have to ask these questions and we have to know the answers. Mm -hmm. So if we are more, if we were more um, sort of technical guys that expect only the list of things to do we we will do this but i don't know if this product would met the initial requirements that were in the heads of of the the expectations yeah or, or, or the or, or was it the, uh, the expected result okay, okay. sort of mm. so you mean that uh, um some might be more technical and like to calculate and analyze data uh, and information and others are more have a more artistic approach look for uh, solutions in form or material or each of it yeah uh, there's a pretty nice term about it it's a holistic approach um, yeah. because we take all small pieces from from the near field of the design uh, subject mm -hmm. and the far uh, far ideas that might never come uh, to to the mind. Okay, if we weren't diverse okay. in the team, because so it's we, about about a broad perspective. Yes, it's all the about the broad per perspective. Uh, of course, sometimes. Um, we have to switch into our not very expertise fields, <laughs> sort of, because um, we have uh, projects on different stages. And sometimes uh, people who are good at research, for example, have to jump into the conceptual phase or have mm. to jump into more um, mechanical phase. Um, but of course, they have help from more experience and more uh, advanced in these field. Mm -hmm. um, you uh, you said the medical industry is your favorite. Do you have a uh, an industry maybe that is most challenging for you whenever it, you come across it? Mm. 
Well, I think that every project is a challenge. For sure. Uh, and it should be. But the most challenging uh, industry is, f for me, it's industrial machinery. Okay. Um, Why is that? Because of the constraints that we have. Okay. Usually, when we design for industrial machinery, we have to design another rectangular object. <laughs> Okay, because the form factor is similar in... Yes, uh, okay. exactly. And uh, to build uh, the machine that is unique, that presents the uh, concepts, the ideas behind the, the brand that we are designing for, mm -hmm. um, it's quite a, of a challenge because we have to think of how to break this form, this rectangular Basically, it's more or less 90% of designs that is rectangular. a rectangular form. How to break it yeah. uh, into shape that looks not so rectangular, <laughs> yeah. but still remains uh, the um, functionality. It's production costs, probably. And production costs, yeah. yes. The, the, the functionality is easy, mm. but, but the manufacturing cost mm, is pretty important in this field. I think it's one of the most important things because uh, in this machinery industry um, margins are not so big because mm -hmm. you have to invest a lot of money into manufacturing these goods yeah. so that the people can buy it. So, um, and these are usually workhorses. They mm -hmm. don't have to look pretty. Yeah, uh, They have to be um, stable, robust, versatile, you know, you so can name that, it. That's what they need to project with their looks, that they're robust, that they're stable, yes. strong. Yes, but I've got one, uh, one story about, about why design matters. Um, because we were visiting one of our uh, contractors. Mm -hmm. They were not our customers because they didn't manufacture the machines. They yeah. were using them. Okay. But um, as just as an example on how design can enhance their business was by uh, looking at their old facility or manufacturing mm -hmm. site and the new one because they so had. You were able to see both. Yes, we were able to see both because they. They've just launched their new uh, manufacturing facility with brand new machines that yeah. were looking like they uh, really cost a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and they did, in fact. Um, but it, the, the, the fun fact is that they uh, brought some new clients into their company and uh, they could... Um, <laughs> quote projects with two times bigger margins when they their clients were visiting their new uh, facility they were like running tests yes they were line, running tests and uh, checking what sort of prices they can get yes when showing the old facility and the yes. new facility and for the similar projects for the similar scope of work they were able to put two times the margin just based just on the based on the look of yeah. the of the facility so yeah that is a fun fact that's interesting this is something that uh, uh, th thought uh, taught us something yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, like we've been uh, to some uh, trade fairs this year in europe and and in the us and a couple of them were uh, different kinds of industrial machines and uh, when we talked to companies that um already did invest in a uh, in nice design of their machines. That's exactly what they said, that it's, it drives the margins and it uh, projects a sort of image that makes um, the brand sort of more approachable or trustworthy. Maybe trustworthy is the right word, because you said that those machines need to show that they're robust, that they're strong, that they won't break and that they will do their job for ages, right? Yes. And that's why when we are going to make impression, we wear suits. We are not wearing t-shirts and, yeah. uh, and jeans. I forgot my jacket. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, so <laughs> not a big deal.
Okay, so let's circle back to working with different industries, but mm, not in the sense of designing mm -hmm. uh, or any engineering work, but in the sense of working with the engineers and the clients themselves. Okay. Um, uh, like we said, they are experts in their fields. So um, I assume that working with a company that, for example, does a product that's highly focused on let's say PCB engineering or, or, or something uh, that is more on the technical side mm -hmm. and less on the uh, exterior design, for example. Okay. Um, I assume working with such a client, with an engineer on that side, is sort of a different experience or a different process than talking with someone who needs a consumer product, uh, which whose sales largely are affected by the exterior design. So they're very focused on how the product will look. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, would you say that they're the same client, that's the same workflow, or do you also specialize in working with, not only in an industry on a type of product, but also with a type of client? Um, we do not have this comfort to, <laughs> to, to work with only the clients that we, we wish to work for. Um, but we are trying and I think that we are able to work with a variety of, of different clients. Mm -hmm. um, these clients that are familiar with industrial design are sort of easier to handle uh, okay. because they already know that design takes time uh, as well as any other stuff that uh, uh, is in common with developing a new product. Okay. It takes time. Um, and we have clients that uh, do not understand it yet. Okay, so you wouldn't say that those clients differ like uh, one being super technical uh, and the other being s super let's say artistic or creative mm -hmm. or whatever, um, but they more differ on whether they were th went through the process before or not. And yes. if they did, it's basically the same working with one or the other. Y yes, s s some uh, sort of, but the difference is when the, the company approaches us from different perspective. When the company approaches us from the perspective of engineers, Mm -hmm. or people who have problem or technical problem An to engineering solve, problem to solve or yeah. engineering problem to solve it's totally different approach yeah and uh, then when we try to serve people who went from marketing uh, the marketing so you're saying it's different when working with a person from an npd department versus a person from a marketing department basically because they're looking for other things yes um from when when people from marketing approach us they need something juicy and some something beautiful mm. just something that runs emotions mm. in our client in, not our clients in their, in their clients. clients so um they are more focused on um how this product might be perceived by their clients. So the difference is that the marketing does not judge the project. Their, oh. cl their, their clients do. Yeah. So um, this process is a little bit harder in terms of uh, making a design or a stylistic that is okay with their clients or if the wow factor, as we, mm. we, we tend to call it, um, is uh, big or small, but for the customers of our client. Um, and when we are speaking with more technical part of the company, like new product development, like R&D, mm. um, these engineering uh, requirements are usually more on the side of manufacturing costs. Okay. So they would like to take down the costs as much as possible while still having the good design. Yeah. 
they are not, not the best. aiming at the yeah. best. They they want to have the good design with still Low reasonable manufacturing costs. Mm. And the difference is that the difficulty lays in different sides. When mm. we have to make something that is bold, as we have in our uh, claim, um, we can do this. But something bold also usually means more expensive to make. Um, it doesn't mean that it's more expensive than the competition, but it's more expensive than the product that is already on the market that is uh, manufactured by the company itself. Uh, and is focused on production costs. Yes. Yeah. Um, because production costs usually um, uh, ruin the design <laughs> because you have to make something cheaper yeah. so you use cheaper tooling you have to use cheaper uh, mm, cheaper technologies to to assemble the mm -hmm. thing uh, so the end product looks mm, cheaper cheaper yes that's why it's not possible to have the product that looks expensive and is cheap in manufacturing. Yeah, but I, I assume, in, like you said, in, in some industries, it, it doesn't necessarily need to look in a specific way. So consumer products need sometimes this wow factor that you mentioned. Um, industrial machinery uh, needs uh, this very solid, robust look and uh, not to be too expensive in manufacturing in order, in order, to, in order to keep up with the competition. Yes. Um, and probably, I, I'm guessing here, that there are some industries where it's uh, looking cheap is good enough. Yes, definitely, yes. Uh, they are not focused on aesthetics as much. But, um, of course, there's still a room for industrial design um, while thinking of product that is looking cheap and is cheap mm. because the perfect example of uh, of the cheap achieving design or the, or the cheap designs in manufacturing is uh, IKEA for example okay because they uh, strive or they do a lot of research a lot of trials and errors to make the product uh, cheap mm. but still looks kind of good yeah but it's not that easy as well because uh, taking these costs down to the level of IKEA, for example, is uh, simply a matter of quantity. Yeah, so mass production allows for um, yes. a unit to be lower, priced lower than with lower Definitely, uh, yes. amounts of production. Uh, they can afford to put several hundreds of millions of dollars <laughs> yeah. to develop a Production set line. of products yeah. uh, that uh, that will be mm, in, in the end uh, cheap enough so that every one of us can afford it but we can afford it because of the fact that it is mass produced yeah so it's sometimes i i, I guess it might seem especially for companies that are in for developing a new product and it's their first rodeo, sort of, so to speak, that they see something on the market, they see it's cheap, so they assume probably they should also be able to make it cheap if they go to a design company, right? Yes, and this is the wrong assumption because they have uh, forgotten that behind these cheap products there is a big brand yeah. that spends a lot of money into marketing and spends a lot of money into the production um, efficiency because when they do the production they do it efficiently mm. you as a smaller company or as a manufacturer that is already or or almost at the beginning of this journey of making a product you cannot expect to be competing with the price yeah. You have to compete with different values. Yeah. You have to compete with functionality, um, but as well as 
most um, important things like re repairability. <laughs> repairability. <laughs> like, yes, like you can repair the product that you that you manufacture, because of course sometimes mass production um, leads into uh, products that are w single use. Yeah. Yeah. And sure. nowadays. Um, it's not only important for our environment, but for the people to have products that can be repaired or re refurbished. Yeah, sure. So that they can have their second or third life. Mm -hmm. So if you work on these values and Industrial Design Studio can help you with that, um, you can have um, success, but of course on a smaller scale because you cannot measure the success of your product with such giants as IKEA, I don't know, Decathlon or something like yeah. this, because it's not possible to compete with them with the price. Sure. That must be uh, difficult to understand for some starting business women or men. Yes, when you are starting the business, I've already uh, read a, a blog post about it, mm -hmm. like you are a um, you are aiming to start your business mm -hmm. and you think that you can sell your product cheaper than your competition, you didn't do your homework yeah. because this price is not a, a is not by surprise. They have uh, precisely defined this price because yeah. of their marketing research or market research, the target group the possibilities on the market that they are selling on and many different aspects. So you need to accept that you don't know a lot when yes, starting. when yeah. you are starting. So um, we can help at least with product development. We cannot help with marketing <laughs> because well, it's it's different, a different area of expertise. But yeah, sure. Um, yeah. Like w w speaking of uh, the manufacturing process, uh, the cost of tooling or logistics or whatever. Um, uh, when uh, you worked with clients from different uh, industries and some products made it to the market, some products didn't, uh, did working on those different uh, manufacturing processes basically, knowing how a product will be manufactured by what sort of company or what sort of tooling will be used. Um, does this also go into the uh, broadening broadening of your perspective when working with different clients? Like knowing the manufacturing process of industrial machinery, does it help with designing a medical device, a handheld medical device? Mm. Sometimes in small details, yes because um, we know, we get to know different technologies that are new on the market. For example, five years ago, uh, 3D printing, which is totally uh, observed in the world that mm -hmm. you can have 3D printer at your home, you can prototype whatever you want. Yeah, like five years ago, you probably could have like a desktop printer. You could have. Yeah. Um, but five or seven years ago, um, something has changed in the area of manufacturing by 3D printing. Because um, several years ago, 3D printing was perceived as just a, as a prototype uh, mm. technology. Nowadays, we've got uh, implementations of this technology into even mass production. Yeah. But of course, these are small details or things that um, can be manufactured in, in different ways. For, for example, injection molding or vacuum casting or whatever it, whatever it is. But it's um, more economical to 3D print these mm -hmm. parts. Uh, so we tend to use these technologies from industrial machinery in uh, consumer electronics, for example, we can 3D print a part that is not visible, mm -hmm. but is uh, that but can be, for example, customized. Can have uh, you can produce 
for example, 2,000 uh, devices, but uh, each hundred of them has different part inside. Yeah, okay. And you, you can do this by injection molding, but it's expensive, um, more expensive than when you have mm, th these individual parts 3D printed. They are not visible to your eye. Yeah. So you not don't part care. Of the, yeah. Yes. So you don't care, for example, about the surface treatment, because we are still. Um, and this is something that has to has to change, I believe, uh, in our perception of good design. Mm -hmm. It is happening, but but not in that in a, such a scale that I wish that 3D printing and uh, surface finish mm -hmm. and our perception of the quality of the surface okay. um, should change. Because 3D printing does not produce the surface quality that uh, injection molding does. It's just not possible. Okay. Um, but it doesn't mean that this product is worse. It doesn't mean that this product doesn't serve a function mm -hmm. for you. It usually do it um, as good as the injection molded parts or even better because mm -hmm. it is um, manufactured without these big tooling uh, or this equipment, big tooling yeah. equipment that is really expensive and when it doesn't work you have to have place to store it. Well you, you said before that 3D printing is still uh, as an industrial solution a fairly new technology um, and it does produce a different kind of material maybe like 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 it had its different stages of the maturity of the technology like uh, knowing or getting used to the um, factor of the the structure of the surface maybe this is something that also needs time it needs time it is uh distilling into our reality mm. because uh, some designers are focused just on 3D printing things mm -hmm. um, and they are showcasing the 3D printed objects that um, have these unique surface uh, finishes mm. that is produced by 3D printing mm. because 3D printing has its, you know, layerness yeah 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 it's a their, different in their structure. appearance but um, it uh, i think that it's going to change in the future um it doesn't have to still be layer by by layer 3d printing so sometimes it, it's going to be more like taking something out of a liquid and you get the finished mm. part so it's like uh with the technologies and other things you you've mentioned before uh knowledge about different materials used in different industries uh, may also mm, mm, with your experience be moved to a different industry to be used maybe in a non-standard sort of uh, sort of way and something might be standard in this industry and you might use it as an innovation in another yes yeah yes because innovating uh, today is not i believe i think that it's not inventing something completely new that yeah. is out of this world. I think that these times have passed. Okay. Maybe we've they will come back. We've invented too many things. <laughs> yes, maybe maybe they will come back with uh, with changing some basic principles of physics, for example. Okay. Because um, the physics that we know already is in our minds for over hundreds of hundreds of years so we cannot extract any more from it yeah uh, so of course, we need to go deeper yes so of course we've got this quantum physics that is uh, taking a deeper look at smaller scale um, so that we can benefit from that as the you know even the processors today are benefiting from the quantum physics yes, so and so what's um what's innovating today in your opinion in my opinion innovating today is merging ideas mm. is bringing one idea from another industry bringing 
second idea from totally different industry and putting these ideas into the third one um, so that you can uh, make the small um, small market or small branch of the of the of, of the area that you are focused on better with these external technologies so basically uh, like the old saying says everything is a remix yeah I guess I guess even the fashion yeah fashion for sure <laughs> is the yeah. pe perfect example and it's visual yeah um, uh, I would like to go back to uh, when we talked about working with different types of clients the mm -hmm. technical and the artistic sort of type the mm -hmm. uh, NPD department and the marketing department okay um, uh, and somehow on that topic how important f for an engineer or an industrial designer or, or, or any kind of designer uh, is it to be to have to be able to communicate with those people who speak a different language sort of because uh, I imagine that when either you're an engineer or an artist you're still in the, in a business mm. in different industries or with different types of people so I wanted to talk about about communication and how to communicate with those clients okay the question is more about the overall experience that you get as a uh, as a specialist as a professionalist mm -hmm. because what i've learned you can okay i am an industrial designer but um, at the beginning of my career i wasn't the industrial designer i was uh, more sort of technical mm, i was a constructor mm -hmm. i was a a guy that was helping salesmen to sell the, some products yeah um and what i've learned during this period of time that communication is the most important part of every professional uh, worker okay because if you cannot communicate effectively effectively with your uh, team or client you will not get the results that are mm. expected okay so yes your your question is really important and answer for this question is that the communication is the most important mm. <laughs> so is it sort is the communicating the, the skill of communicating effectively uh, is it like in our team also some people feel better communicating with the technical engineers and some feel better communicating with the marketing engineers is it, uh, is it also something like having a uh, preferred or favorite um, industry or mm -hmm. type of project um, it, 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 yes of course we do uh, we do not specialize in speaking with people <laughs> yeah but we have to be uh, but damn it we have to do it <laughs> <laughs> yes some kind of of, uh, of communication is uh, is a tool in in the hand of every designer or mm -hmm. every every salesman so when we speak uh, with with uh, marketing departments uh, we usually tend to speak with uh, with the business developer mm -hmm. so, so the business developer side of our company is is uh, approaching these clients but when the talk is uh, turning more into specific topic or the more technical topic yeah um, uh, the, the the business development uh, asks they, for help yeah they can deliver yeah uh, they cannot answer these questions sure. which probably can be answered by each of us each of the designer that we have Mm, but of course when we are speaking about the specific industry like uh, I'm more specialized in surface design mm -hmm. so when we are going to surface something like um, more stylistic or more um, or these surfaces just have to be neat um, mm -hmm. or need to, to, to make a mold out, out of it mm -hmm. 
Um, so that we are speaking about surfacing, we are speaking about different aspects of it. Uh, but when we are speaking about uh, technology to, ma to manufacture uh, sheet metal, yeah, it's it's also something that you can ex be expert in. Um, our clients speak with different uh, with someone else from the with team. someone else okay. uh, from from our team. Because so, simply they have a more common language and uh, understand each other. Yes, better. they understand each, each other. They can um, operate on different level of communication. This level is more um, more technical, more deep. We, we, we as designers can speak with everyone, I think, <laughs> mm -hmm. about, um, about the big picture of each technology, of each, uh, of each uh, design style, for example, yeah. um, because we are open-minded. But when, when the thing comes more into the technical side of the, uh, mm, of the project, we have to take the most, ex the most experienced guy from mm -hmm. our team to help us uh, with this specific, yeah, uh, I don't know, topic, question, yeah, well, whatever. Uh, as you know, my previous experience was also in the creative industry, but not in industrial design. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to working with clients, my perspective was always, um, no matter how good a job you'll do, if you fail at communicating with your client, the project will be dead anyway. So you can be on time, you can do a good project, but if you can't find a, a, a thread between you and the client, and you will, then you will go into the spiral of arguing on details that may be not important or maybe may have a very simple solution. I mm. always thought that communication, like you said, so I agree with you, is the basic of any creative work, the basis. I think yes. Yeah. It's something that when you cannot communicate effectively, you will not sell, not in the sense of money. Yeah. You will not sell your idea. Exactly. Um, and if and you this, are... It, it is important for, for a designer, right? Because you, you might be so in love with your idea. You might, be, you might have great arguments that your idea is the best possible solution at the point, at this moment. But if you won't communicate it, like you said, in the right way, someone on the other side might think that I don't like this guy. I'm not going to like his design either. Um, yeah. Okay. It's, yeah. it's possible. It's possible. But um, there's something that is a um, derivative of your, uh -huh. uh, of your sentence, because when we as designers fall in love in with our project, yeah, it's a crash prediction. <laughs> yeah, you're already doomed. Uh, yes, because you cannot fall in love with your yeah. project. Uh, <laughs> you, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I know that we tend to uh, like our babies <laughs> because it's uh, it's our creative work, it's our time, it's part of our life. But when we fell in love with one product project of another or, or another of course i've got my favorites but i didn't fall in love with them because each love is harsh yeah <laughs> you, it, you know. it, it's not going to go well with youtube but in my previous in my previous company we used to say that you you, know, you need to learn to kill your babies uh, yeah <laughs> something like this <laughs> yes you have to be uh, as objective as possible of course, within the uh, within within some constraints yeah, that you have, some margin, yeah. Um, but but still, you have to sell this idea or your idea, your concept, your project, your um, your s small piece of work that you have uh, put into this bigger project. Maybe uh, you, you you should sell it like you have loved it. Mm. <laughs> But you cannot fall in love, yeah. Uh, because ah, oh, fake love. Something, something after the presentation might happen like that might ruin your whole idea. Like the client says, "Okay, it's good, 
but I don't like it. Yeah. And it's that, okay, but not okay enough. That's his <laughs> feedback. And what do you do with it? <laughs> of course, when you are more experienced, you you are mm, asking not questions, not taking it for granted. You're yeah. just asking questions. Why do you don't like it? Why there is something that maybe we have missed something? Sometimes after this, I don't like it. Uh, uh, something that is miss, mm, not misspelled, but is not articulated, not articulated uh, yeah. clearly is just after the sentence and you if you don't ask a question you won't have this simple answer for example yeah. i don't like this color if it would be in black or in i don't know gray ish yeah. it would be okay okay <laughs> yeah so sometimes those little things are um ruining in, uh, the, the design from your perspective but the client has its own perspective yeah sure and you know he's paying you <laughs> so sometimes it's good to um, take his word as the most important one do you think your team could work uh, could design for any industry I believe yes yeah when we have uh, a good team from the client or when the, our client has a team that is open-minded and he uh, and this team wants to deliver something good or better than they have already and they preferably have an experience in the designing process definitely we cannot design in in the void we have to design uh, with people for people uh, and I believe that when uh, meeting these criteria um, is is on a good on a good level, we can um, develop product in every brand or every market possible. Great. Okay. Well, thanks a lot for the talk today. Um, we're, we were talking about being a versatile product designer. I think we've touched a lot of interesting, interesting topics on that. So till next time, I guess. Till next time. Thank you. Cool. Thank you.